Hi guys, it's Master Coach Tony Morgan and today's video is on a British Gas 541i condensing boiler. It's badged up under British Gas but it's really a Worcester. So anyway, in today's video we're going to be discussing the fault analysis quadrant. So we're going to be with my student Mark, he's going to be helping me with this video and we're going to be going through a couple of scenarios using the quadrant and see how it helps Mark to narrow down the fault. So what we're now going to say is I've got a scenario coming up and you can see this code on the boiler. So a customer is going to ring and say, oh, I've got this fault on my boiler. So Mark, if you have kind of talked to a customer over the phone and you ask them, you know. Hello. So, um, so we've got this fault showing and also you can see um, pressure's down. So if I was a customer and I said to you Mark, well, it's showing this fault code, oh, and the pressure isn't that good, it's down, it's only about half a bar. So using your fault analysis quadrant, what would you be looking under to help you narrow the fault? Bear in mind, the bar is not firing up at all as well. So you've got a few things to consider. So okay, Mark, um, I've told you as a customer or the, the type of scenario what's going on. So yeah. using the quadrant, what do you think you're gonna do? Or what? how would the quadrant gonna help you? Right, well you've told me there's no heating, there's no hot water. So the quadrant, I'm going to look at it now and I'm going straight to ignition failure. Because I know that the code you've told me is a fan problem. So that is ignition failure on the, quad, the quadrant. Um, so I'm going to look at that straight away because if the fan doesn't run, you're going to get no heating or hot water. So I'm going to look at that, which is ignition failure side of the quadrant. So that is number 10 on the quadrant. So I'm going to check the fan straight away, make sure uh, we're getting 240 volts to it, make sure it's working. Uh, and then you've also told me about the pressure. So that, you know, that's got its own separate quadrant. So that can be, you know, 10 different things. So I'm going to check that as well, see how that, all of that's working. So in that quadrant, what, what then things in that quadrant? On the regarding... pressure, we've got expansion vessel, box expansion vessel, vessel pipe, PRV, diverter valve cartridge, radiator valves, hole in radiator, pipe work, um, main exchanger, filling loop, and hot water heat exchanger. So we've got 10 things on that. Right, okay, so how do you feel then that this quadrant, what you've got based on your mobile phone, what you can refer to at any time? I think it, it simplifies it a lot, um, can save a lot of time. And I just think it's a great tool for fault finding. It's just so simple and well thought out. It's it's great, and I'll use it every time. Every time I'm on a, on a job like this, I'll use it. So, Matt, we've got another scenario. Um, we've got an EA fault. Right. So now, as I'm the customer, if I rang you about a boiler fault in this particular boiler, I'm going to tell you this is a kind of display what it's saying. So, using the quadrant, what would you say you're going to be looking at? Right, okay, so um, you, you've told me the code is flashing up, which is EA, so I'm looking at the quadrant now, and that takes me straight to ignition failure. So there's 12 things I can check on this, um, 12 possible causes of what I've been that follow up. So number one is condensate blocks, two gas valve, Three gas supply, four injector blocks, five spark electrode spark gap, six the flame sensing electrode, seven the spark generator, eight ignition lead, nine faulty burner, ten flu problem, eleven fan or uh, pressure switch, and twelve ignition PCV. This can point me out to where the problem is, so it's quite a useful tool. Excellent. Okay, so we need to investigate what that is. 
so that's the next thing we're going to do now look at the electrode on this boiler this is the old type of electrodes because it's got the window in so on these type of boilers we recommend we're going to change that anyway because it's got the window in sometimes them, that window can break and um, cause obviously heat coming out of the boiler so the new ones don't have that on so we know it's the old type so that's the first thing I'm going to go for check the electrodes in fact we're going to just replace them because of that particular design you can see this is this is the um, old one and this is the new one so you can see the difference so we're going to replace electrode as I said and then we'll try the boiler and see if it fires up you can see we've now replaced them and the boiler is fired up so the burn lights on and you can hear the fan increasing Okay Matt, so just to conclude, what do you think of using the fault analysis quadrant then? Yeah, it's brilliant, um, saves a lot of time, it's very simple to follow, uh, it's got everything in it, points you in the right direction, uh, recommend it to anyone really, um, I'm definitely, definitely going to use it every time I go to a job now, um, saves a lot of time, well thought out of, um, yeah, it's really good. Right, so the areas what we focused on using the quadrant, what yeah. Would I? yeah, well, uh, it pointed me straight away to ignition failure. Um, so we use that twice now one for a fan fault, one for a um, spark electrode fault. Um, so yeah, it just saves a lot of time. Uh, it gets you straight there to the problem. Uh, just guides you that generally. It just, just saves so much time and thinking about it. It's just all there for you. I, I recommend it to everyone. I'm definitely going to use it. Yeah, every time okay. No problem. So that's it. Yeah, thanks, Mark. And um, that's going to be the end of this video. So, as I said, click on the description below and you can download this free ebook which explains the quadrant. And you can also use it on your fault diagnostics and give some feedback. Let me know how, if it's helped you on your diagnostic journey. So, that's it from me. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.